All right, guys. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about choosing your first traditional Japanese knife. Now, what I mean by traditional Japanese is a single bevel knife. Now, there's a whole bunch of uh, traditional knives styles out there, like Yanagi's, Deba's, Usuba's. But what I'm going to talk about is a little bit more about how to choose a, a good knife. And there's a um, there's a couple of things that's uh, that's really important for you guys to keep in mind when you're thinking of a traditional Japanese knife. Now, these knives are generally um, handmade, right? There's a blacksmith that's hammering this out, and uh, it, it's there's no high tech equipment involved. Generally, it's experience. You know, the blacksmith is literally hammering away, and he's uh, to getting the feedback from the hammer into his arm. And really going by that, he's looking into the uh, the furnace, and he's looking at the color of the flame and how how hot the metal is getting. Is it orange? Is it white? He's you know determining from experience. There's no you know thermometers or temperature gauges. There's no way to really um, quantify these things. So the first thing that you want to remember when you're choosing your first Japanese knife is that the craftsmanship really matters. Who makes that knife really matters. And um, nowadays, you know, a lot of makers are really putting out the name of the blacksmith, but you know, there are a lot of places that don't do that still. And in that case, you just have to go by a reputable brand. So the best way for you really would be to do your research, make sure you know what you're doing. You know, for us, example, at Corin, we try to carry what we feel is the best. And we did our research and we work with, you know, some of the most experienced uh, craftsmen in Japan. So, um, you know, make sure you do your research. Now, the other thing about traditional Japanese knives is the steel that the knife is made of. Now, there's a lot of different steels out there. There's white steel, there's blue steel, and um, there's stainless, there's carbon. Generally speaking though, for traditional single bevel knives, I like, to, uh, I like to recommend high carbon. Now, the reason for that is because high carbon steel really, really is able to achieve a really, really fine edge. And that's the whole point of these single bevel knives. Uh, single bevel allows for the finest edge. So, you know, having a high carbon really goes hand in hand with a single bevel knife. Now, the problem with high carbon steel is that it can rust. So, as you can see here, there's a lot of rusting on this knife. This is a knife that I had laying around in Corin, and uh, yeah, it was, it was neglected for a while, so it developed stains. It wasn't wet, it wasn't really doing anything, but you know, because it's high carbon, the humidity in the air can get to the knife and cause it to start to rust. So as you can see, you know, this I can take out, this is not too bad, but if you leave it for too long, it can definitely start to affect the knife, the quality of the knife, quality of the edge. So with a high carbon knife, it does require a lot more work, a lot more maintenance, uh, keeping it dry, oiling it, etc. Now there's also stain resistant knives. And stain resistant knives, you know, I, I don't like to recommend too much for traditional knives unless you're in an environment that you really need that stainless quality. For example, if you work in Miami or you work in a very humid climate, uh, I know a lot of our customers that work in the Caribbean region, for example, can't really deal with carbon knives because the salt in the air and uh, just the humidity really eats the knife away. So. In those environments, you know, that's when I like to recommend the stainless knives. Now, generally speaking, stainless knives have come a long way and there are some great high quality stainless knives out there. Uh, I know, for example, our partners, Nenohi, Masamoto, and Suisin as well, they all make a very high quality uh, stainless variant of their traditional single bevel knives. But they are a little bit more pricey. So you want to keep that in mind. So one thing to keep in mind when you're buying a good quality um, traditional single level knife is that the higher the quality, the more consistent and even that edge or bevel will be. So right here, you can see the, where the bevel starts. This is called the Shinogi line. So everything beyond that point, this whole surface is the bevel. And that by nature is always going to be a little bit bumpy. It's going to have dips and valleys and you have to really grind that out. And there is a term for that called the home bazooka. The higher the quality, the more even this is uh, right out of the box. But when you get a really um, badly made knife, when you get a knife that's of 
lower quality, this surface right here is going to be extremely uneven and it's going to be very difficult for you to flatten out. Another thing to keep in mind when you're looking for a traditional Japanese knife, you want to make sure you understand the construction of these knives. Um, generally, the back of these knives are going to be concave. I'll try to show you right here. The back is actually concave and it's hollowed out a little bit. And that's very important for the knife. If that's not there, there's going to be a lot of friction between the knife and the ingredient you're cutting, so it's not going to perform well. I see in some extreme cases where the knife was not hollowed out on the back whatsoever, so you want to avoid those knives. Make sure that you check the back to make sure that it's hollowed out properly. A really easy way to see that, make sure that you see a little line going around the perimeter of the knife. That means that the middle part is hollowed out and it's not making contact with the stone, and that means that the knife is properly made. So I really hope this helps you clarify what you should be looking for when you're looking for your first traditional knife. There are many things that you need to look out for, but hopefully with a little bit of research, you'll be able to find the perfect knife for you.